What's up guys, I'm Nathan and in this video I'll be showing you guys the updated anime adventures tier list for the new Chainsaw Man update. Now I have finally changed the format of the tier list. We have a few understatement <laughs> uh, tiers uh, and this is now going to be grouped based on categories. So let me know if you guys prefer this uh, compared to the generic A S tier, A tier, B tier and so on. So first up we have meta ground which is basically meta DPS for ground. Meta air, meta DPS for air. Support units are the ones like freeze and stuff. Utility is stuff that basically uh, it it's damage related but at the same time it's only useful in certain situations. For example bleed, stuff like that. Great is units that are really really good but just can't really be meta for anything. Good is gonna be characters that are well decent but not even close to meta. Average is gonna be, well, average mostly the older characters and the kind of old meta units. Uh, bad is gonna be the characters you really shouldn't get. And beginners is gonna be the few legendary units that I've added in this list. Just uh, because I know that some of you guys watching these videos are definitely beginners and cannot instantly get these mythics. Starting off with Super Trunks, I'm gonna go ahead and put him in Utility. He's more used as a Shield Breaker. Next up we have Cell Super Perfect, who's gonna be in Great. He is not a meta air, but he's definitely very good. Then we have Jelly Heaven, who is also quite solid. Both of these are really good. Um, apparently I have two Jelly Heaven, oops. Uh, then we have Urza Lightning, who is also going to be great. He's, uh, she's just not really a meta air. Then we have Urza Valkyrie. Um, now, Urza Valkyrie is the one with, um, uh, uh, with the 50% crit, so... This one is just going to be, I would say, in good, not really even close to meta. Uh, then we have Urza True Heart, who bleeds. It's a pretty good bleed DPS, but it's definitely outdated by the new stuff, which is going to be a Denji power combo. I'll be explaining to you guys about that very soon. Then we have Natsu uh, Lightning Dragon mode. That's definitely a solid unit. Um, he's gonna be able to burn and he's definitely uh, actually I'll go ahead and put super trunks down in like uh, Great because I don't think he's really meta as utility because Gildots is just a bit better because of his shadow Then we have a great devil slayer who's gonna go and support because he's a freeze. He has reasonable DPS as well uh, Speaking of Gildots here. He is full AOE and he's got shadow which instantly breaks the shields then we have uh, Lucy Celestial, who's going to be a pretty solid uh, summoner who does uh, around 8,000 DPS with a small AOE on each one, but only one of her, uh, only like a, s a couple of her summons can stay on the field at once. So yeah, she's just going to be low in good tier. Uh, then we have Gon, who is going to be definitely a very good, uh, coming under like great because Gon can be really good for hitting air. Um, uh, because uh, he just has full AOE with huge range and he's actually really good to use on story mode um, so I might actually put him at the bottom for meta air or maybe I just put him right here uh, because his damage is definitely outdated but the thing is he's really cheap to get to an upgrade where he will do around 30k damage uh, so it's actually really really useful to bring with you on story mode then we have Kilua Godspeed, who's just gonna go in average. He's a support unit, but not a particularly good support unit. However, he does have a really fast SPA. So actually, I might just put him, the, uh, you know, I'll just put him in average. Then we have King Mirum, who's going to be um, in, uh, I would say good, because Mirum is gonna be able to hit air units uh, or air enemies, so it's not bad. Uh, I'll actually bring both of these down to average. Uh, then we have Chairman Netro, who's definitely going to be just an average uh, because his damage uh, per second is going down all the way to 4800. Uh, Mirum is, at least is going to be able to hit air. Then we have Pito, who is going to. Uh, well, he's uh, he can't really be utility because uh, like uh, he's not the best bleeder out there, but he's definitely not bad. So I'll go ahead and put him. Uh, in uh, the great tier because he does have a solid DPS for bleed. Um, then we have Hisoka. Hisoka is going to be for beginners because he actually slows and stuns, which is not bad. Kit, uh, or rather Kite Frenzy, is kind of average uh, because his attack mechanics just aren't consistent. I would say Killua is better because Killua is going to be able to stun with a really fast SPA. Then we have Coyote Stark, who's going to be right there. 
uh, he's definitely outdated and he's just a DPS unit, so it's definitely not that gr great. Then we have um, uh, Ulquiora, who is gonna be, I'll go ahead and put him at low for like meta, nah, I won't put him at meta air, I'll just put him like around here. Uh, he's probably gonna be better than like Gone, I would say. Uh, but uh, he's definitely a good hybrid. He's been buffed a lot, so he's pretty solid to get, but he's not really a meta. Well, he's actually, you could use him as a meta, so I'll, I'll just put him there because there's a lot of alternatives that can be used for air. Um, uh, Uryu, although he it's air, is just kind of average, I gotta say. He has crit, but his AoE is really small and his DPS isn't amazing. Uh, so I'll just put him right about um, here. Then we have Rukia, who's again for beginners. Uh, she actually is going to be able to freeze with full AoE, and you can place four of her. Kiske Bankai is going to be in support. Um, he's pretty high value in trade right now, uh, so I mean, if it's a bit tough to get him, but I mean, it is doable. Then we have uh, Rangoku, a blaze, who is a pretty solid burn unit, but he only has 3600 DPS, which isn't amazing compared to the new ones. Plus, he actually uh, uh, is pretty hard to get compared to some of the better burning units. Then we have um, Akaza Destruction. Akaza Destruction is probably going to be, uh, I would say, like higher and average because Rengoku is at least able to burn. Uh, so Akaza Destruction is going to be like right about here. He's able to self-buff, so that's the. Then we have uh, Arima. Uh, Arima is going to go in like bottom of average. He used to be meta, but definitely not even close to that now. Uh, Ito is just bad. Don't get Ito. He self-buffs every wave, but it's just not good. Then we have Jozu. Uh, Jozu is not going to be in bad just because of the fact that he is able to bleed. So he has a bit more usefulness overall compared to Arima, but he's not really amazing. Then we have Tatara who burns, but this is a really bad burner unit. Uh, however, he does have double burn, which is why I'll put him at like the uh, absolute bottom of average. Then we have a uh, Naruto Beast Cloak. Do not get this character. It's really not worth it. Then we have Fleet Admiral Akenu, who is actually not terrible. I'll go ahead and put him uh, right about here because Akenu is actually going to hit air plus burn. So it's like double usefulness. Um, then we have... Um, uh, Red Scar, uh, this is Shanks, uh, well he's actually really bad. While he is a support, he's not a very good support, he has really bad DPS. And even if you get her, you should really just use him as fodder if you're just trying to evolve Aizen, just sacrifice him. He's not that good. He has time stop, but it's still not really good compared to most of our new units. Then we have uh, uh, Karakuri, who's definitely meta as a support. Not right here. He's going to be under support because he actually slows down the enemies and actually has a reasonably good DPS. Then we have uh, Emperor Whitebeard who is pretty decent as a support but definitely not going to go in the support tier because he's not a very good support. So I would say he's uh, just a, a really low on average. Uh, probably above Tatara right there. Then we have Blackbeard, who is once again useful for beginners. Then we have Madara, who is actually going to go in utility. Because Madara is also just about as good as Natsu. He has like kind of really good AoE, uh, solid burn. Uh, so yeah, definitely useful. Now Broly hits air, but he is not amazing. Uh, well, I wouldn't put him in bad because he does have full AoE. But his DPS is... Um, not not good. You know what? I might just put him bottom of average. Uh, on a second thought, I'll literally just put him in bad. Like, even Tatara deserves to go in bad. Like, just... If you get Tatara, even though he burns, just don't... Don't even evolve him. At least Emperor Whitebeard did kind of get a buff. So, yeah. Uh, then we have Sakura, who's definitely a meta support. Uh, Sakura boss your units by 10%, uh, which is... As it is helpful because it's just on placement and she heals your base. Well, before she only healed, but now she gives you even more than your max base HP, which is really useful for one of our new units, which we got, which is the uh, uh, Devil Angel. Then we have a uh, speed wagon who's obviously gonna go and support you. You do need him for like 15 waves farming. Uh, then we have uh, uh, 
Bulma, who you need for 20 plus waves farming. Uh, definitely, both of these are absolutely essential. Then we have Owen, who is going to be right about here. Uh, Owen boss your physical units by 25%, and it's definitely really helpful. Then we have Chainsaw Hybrid. Now, Chainsaw is a really good bleeding unit, and he has a lot of bleeding damage. He's going to go into the utility tier because he's just not pure DPS. Uh, he does have solid DPS, which is uh, around 7 to 8,000. Uh, when you include uh, and when you include his bleed it goes a little over 11,000 which is actually pretty solid and uh, the thing is when you combine this with power who uh, uh, actually supposed to put an aura on the enemies which makes them take five times more bleeding damage this can actually be an extremely good combo uh, so I'm putting both of these in utility you need them together to actually work uh, so I can't just put them straight up in meta ground or meta air. Plus, this is mainly going to be helpful against regens. It's like a counter for those. Then we have Aki Contract. Uh, now, this is definitely a really good unit. Uh, it's going to go in great. I wouldn't say it's meta uh, because the thing is, there's a lot of characters with a similar amount of DPS that actually do something extra. Uh, Aki has like 12k plus DPS. Pretty good. And when you use his ability... Uh, he will get a pretty uh, decent sized AoE uh, with Kon, uh, but yeah, it just can't really be meta. Uh, now, Himeno definitely has a chance of being meta. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, her in utility. Uh, I'm not really sure where she would fit, but she's uh, when you use her ability, she kind of disappears and summons a ghost. Uh, kind of like how it works in the anime. And the, this ghost has 200, uh, around 300,000 HP and it attacks in an AoE in front of it and it works slowly so you don't need to worry about losing out on DPS. So it's actually, uh, Himeno can be good, uh, it's just that you're gonna have to use a bit of cash. However, she's not insanely expensive, so she definitely could be a meta. I'm just not really sure where she would fit in it uh, as of now. Then we have the Devil Angel who's also gonna go in utility for now because I'm not really sure where his role will be in the meta and if he can be because the thing is we definitely are going to need a better uh, what's it called support uh, that heals your base to use this character now the thing is this character is insane yeah, you can place down three of him and he's got like 30k around DPS which is absolutely insane a solid AoE pretty decent range as well but there's a huge catch Every single attack that this character does is going to take off around 3 to 5% of your base HP. Now, even with all your Sakuras placed down healing your base, if you have all of your Angel Devils placed down, they're only going to be able to attack around 5 times before you get to 1 HP and they just stop attacking. And, well, this, as you can guess, isn't particularly great. Since you, uh, th th your other units are definitely going to be able to attack more than 5 times. However, if we do get a better healer, we're definitely going to get a, a easy spot in meta air. Because he also is a hybrid. Now, Dio over heaven is going to go in meta air. Well, he is a support, but well, he also hits air and he's also got good AoE. So he's just good for everything. Uh, Ice Queen, Empire Strong is definitely going to be in meta ground. Uh, because... Well, uh, th these characters are supports, but they also have insane DPS. Uh, Ice Queen actually has full AoE with around 10,000 DPS and freeze, which is extremely good. Uh, actually, she used to be able to hit air, but she was nerfed. Then we have Todoroki released, who is going to get a spot in utility. Definitely pretty solid. He freezes, which is good, and he burns as well. So he can be support and utility. It's kind of a mix. Then you have Toshiro, who would probably go under meta air. Both uh, Ulquira and Toshiro are pretty good, uh, but these both have like different uses as per like physical or magic. Then we have Haku, who you can place around 5, but he's just not insane. Uh, I'll go ahead and put Haku like right about here. Um, he's just, he's not amazing. He's decent, I would say. Then we have Aokiji, who's gonna go and support. Uh, doesn't have the insane raw damage of S death to get to meta ground, but he's kind of like a Walmart S death. You can actually place around four of him, which is making him a bit more useful as a support. Then we have Jotaro the world, 
who is gonna go in meta ground as well because Jotaro will be able to time stop but he also has like meta levels of damage coming in at around 12,000. Uh, Ice Queen however does have full AoE so I'm putting her above but he also is gonna be able to time stop the enemies which lasts a bit longer than the freeze. Then we have Jolene who's going to be in support because she will be able to stun the enemies with around 9 to 10,000 DPS. So it's definitely a very good unit DPS wise. Then we have Ormiz. Uh, honestly, it's not too bad because he crits. Uh, he's got a decent DPS around 8,000 and he can place around 5 of him. However, it's just not really going to get him to an amazing spot. So we'll just go ahead and put Ormiz right about there. Uh, below the air units, the, uh, I wouldn't say he's better than those. Uh, but you can definitely use him as a shield breaker. Pucci Heaven obviously gonna come under meta ground uh, because Pucci Heaven just has insane amounts of DPS. Plus, he's an amazing support because when you use his ability, all uh, of your units get half SPA, which is really, really helpful. Then we have Heavy Weather, who's just an amazing air unit. He's got like 7,300 DPS, an absolutely massive circle AoE, and he hits air uh, as a magic unit, so it's just really good in every way. Then we have Gacho. Honestly, I would put him under the great tier because Gacho is actually pretty, pretty good. I'll put him right about there. Uh, for a free unit, he's uh, quite worth to use uh, if you don't have anything better. Then you have Emilia, who's definitely a solid support. This one's more useful on things like story mode because it's just on placement, she's going to be able to freeze and stuff. So it's definitely pretty helpful. Uh, then, uh, so I'm putting her in support. Then we, uh, Plus you can place it on five of hers, which is really good. You can just spread her out a lot better. Then we have Aizen, who's gonna be right there. Uh, kind of tied with Dio over heaven, honestly. Uh, because Aizen is going to be able to hit air with full AoE. A deal is going to be able to time stop the entire map. However, this cooldown is extremely, extremely long. Then we have Yamamoto Hellfire, who's definitely going to take a solid spot as meta air because uh, Yamamoto is going to be able to hit as with his ability. Now, the thing is, with his ability, you get 2% extra damage with every single uh, enemy killed. And this stacks up to 550 enemies, which is 1,100% or around 1 million damage in full AoE with multi-hit to airs. And this is, well, as you can guess, extremely good. Now, Soifan is actually also really good uh, because you can place around 5 of her and she's just pretty good as a solid DPS. However, she doesn't have multi-hit. It's still pretty good. Then we have Ichigo Final Dusk, who's definitely going to take a very solid spot right here because Ichigo hits air with amazing DPS and uh, when you sell, uh, when you use the ability of this character, he actually disappears and does 10 times of his damage, which is really good. Uh, then we have uh, Kenpachi, who's going to go and support here because he stuns. He also has really good DPS, so I'll go and put him right about there. Then we have... And Jing, uh, Jing is not really that good. Honestly, I would put him in uh, average. Uh, actually, uh, speaking of average, like uh, King Mirum would also definitely have to go down into average, even though he is able to hit air. Uh, Rengoku definitely also has to go into average. I, I, I'm just gonna balance this out a bit. Since I'm not kind of used to using this one, Rengoku is a bit more useful than Jing overall because at least he's gonna be able to burn the enemies. Same for Fleet Admiral Akinu. These actually kind of have some amount of utility. Um, yeah. Then, um, just gonna balance this out a bit. Yeah. Then we have Julio, who's gonna go and support. He actually has amazing DPS around 14,000. However, the big catch is you can only place it on one. However, if you get something like unique on this character, he is very good. But just don't. He has, he's a support because he has the ability to push enemies back, which is pretty good. Uh, then, uh, then next up we have uh, Dark Aster. Dark Aster, definitely a really good physical DPS. I'll go ahead and put him right about there. Then we have Yuno, uh, and he's mainly useful on things like story. Yuno is going to be coming out of meta air. I would say below Siphon because Siphon overall will have more DPS. And even though you know it's multi hit, I just feel like Soifan is better. Then we have Yami. Uh, Yami is gonna go in, like, I would say a little above uh, average. 
probably um, I would put Yami like right about there because he does hit pretty good damage. It's just not amazing. Uh, like it's around 6,000 DPS with really good range. Um, then we have uh, Noel. Noel is gonna go as a utility unit because Noel actually with the relic uh, reduces magic shields plus you can place around five of her so that's pretty good. Now Lucky, I'm gonna, uh, he is getting a bit outdated, I'm not gonna lie, but I'll go ahead and put him under meta ground for now. Uh, he's still pretty good. Uh, he has his battle loss, which gives him 25% extra damage, and he has good range and good AoE with good placement at least. Then we have uh, Wendy, who's gonna be a support unit. Uh, he actually, she's gonna be buffing by 30% all your magical units. Magnum is pretty good for beginners as a burning unit. Uh, Tangen is gonna just be kind of average. I'll go ahead and put Tangen right here. Then we have Moriah who's gonna be, well, kind of making it to good since he does have over 6,000 DPS. Uh, he's not he's not terrible, but he isn't amazing either. Then we have Perona who's gonna be a support. Uh, Perona is gonna be able to slow down airs as well, so it's not bad. Then we have uh, Brooke, who's also going to be a support. Uh, then we have Sukuna, who is uh, also going to be a support because while he does have amazing DPS, he also dismembers the enemies, making them take 20% more physical damage until they die. Uh, then we have Yuta. Uh, Yuta is actually just a really good magic DPS, but I don't think he can keep his spot in the meta anymore, even though he has amazing range. Just because of the fact that you can only place down three of him and he's kind of expensive. So I'll go ahead and put him like at the top of great. Uh, there could be some inaccuracy there, so I'm sorry if that is the like, case. Then we have Ghetto Maximum, who's definitely going to take a spot right about here. Uh, then we have uh, Megumi, who's going to take a spot in support right next to Sukuna. Because he is going to be able to curse the enemies, making them take around 25% or 30% more magic damage. Then we have Gojo Six Eyes, who's going to be meta ground because, well, he's going to be able to do double his damage, his usual damage with his skill, plus an 8 second global time stop without a ridiculously high cooldown. So I'm keeping him right there because he also has amazing damage as a meta ground. Um, then we have uh, uh, Nobara, who's going to be really good for beginners because she hits air and she bleeds. And finally, we have Kent Overtime, who's gonna come under the great tier because he's actually potentially amazing when you look at uh, infinite mode since his damage will keep scaling. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tier list. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if there's anything you disagree with, be sure to let me know because obviously this is a, a new format of working on these tier lists. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.